Yes, Tim Cook here, and I will be delivering your next segment of Apple News. Welcome back, guys. I have a really, really big update to share with you today regarding a lot of iPhone 11 leaks, the HomePod 2. The iPhone SE 2 makes a shady comeback, not really, spoiler alert, amongst others. And what a beautiful day, guys. It is snowing here in the Pacific Northwest. So that was a beautiful thing to wake up to. And then this happened. There was a bird in my office randomly, so. <laughs> Can I use this thing? Face ID, you need bird ID on this. <laughs> this little man has no respect for the history of the iPhone. He just takes a dump on it. Thanks, guy. Oh, oh sh no. A few moments later. Uh, I just what quick. the heck? I'm so confused. Okay, I'm gonna go through this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Chill, man. Don't take <laughs> on my iPhone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just wanna let you know there's a jam-packed video, so stay tuned for the ride. First thing I wanted to start off with is the HomePod 2. Apple is working on a next generation way of interacting with your HomePod via this new patent. Now I'm assuming this is for the HomePod because they don't specifically name it here, but they do go into detail about how this will have face ID, hand gestures where you'll be able to actually signal certain things and features to show up on the HomePod amongst a display on the side. So weaved into the fabric, Apple could be implementing some sort of LCD here on the side of the HomePod going forward. But what interests me most about this is the Face ID module. So Apple is gonna somehow cook in Face ID into this, not necessarily through a top end display, maybe through that Weave LCD display on the side. And the HomePod is gonna handle the personal requests via Face ID. So that's an extra layer of security for your home speaker. I mean, this thing is getting ridiculously complex. It already has an Apple A10 processor in it. Apple needs to learn how to make a lot of money on these and sell more, I think, before going deeper. But it's really cool that they're already working on this. And what interests me further is that there was an article earlier that apparently Apple is losing money on every HomePod they're selling and it just didn't make sense to me. I'm glad it turned out to be false as Mark Gurman commented on this and said, there's no way that Apple would be selling a speaker if they were losing money on it. I mean, that's an Apple A10 processor, this really big core, there's a lot of material cost. What sense would it make for Apple to sell these and lose money on them? So that's good going forward for the HomePod 2. It means they are selling, even though the market for smart speakers is still in its infancy, there's a lot of room to grow here. There's also a couple other features that were detailed, such as ambient light sensing, displaying like an icon with a sun or rain on the side to forecast the weather for you, maybe even heart rate sensing. I don't know how that would work. Or displaying the logo of your sports team if it won the game necessarily on the side. So that's kind of interesting. They're thinking outside the box and that's what I like. I like to see patents like these. And there's been a new report on the iPhone 11 that goes into detail about some things we haven't heard anywhere else. And this is coming from Droid Shout. What is this? Yeah, as you can tell, a source that doesn't really have any reputable history behind it. And they're saying that USB-C is happening on this year's iPhone. More than likely, Apple will finally be caving into the demands of the users and adding USB-C, although that may shift with time, they're saying. So it's not concrete. What they are saying is concrete. What they're almost certain about is that there will be a new greenish color on the iPhone XR2. They also did confirm that the lenses would be changing on that one. It would be getting a dual lens system, but the notch on the iPhone XR2 will not be growing in size. Apple might be keeping it the same to keep costs down, just updating the camera on the rear and giving it that new green color. What's interesting though that they said about that is that the green color will be replacing some sort of existing color already. So take your pick. I'm sure one of the colors that's the least popular Apple's gonna ax and replace with, I'm assuming like an iPhone 5C type minty green. They also did mention that the iPhone 11, the 10S successor is gonna be the one that's getting the smaller notch. So that's gonna be reserved for the higher end models. The 10R remains with the larger one. What's interesting and where they go into detail about something we haven't heard before is that there is is going to be a new coating on the iPhone 11, supposedly. This is going to aid in more grip, so the phone will become less slippery as a result of this new coating process. And Apple does have a lot of patents for this kind of stuff, so it definitely doesn't surprise me. Another benefit of this new coating is going to be added scratch resistance. Apple has been working hard on their new glass technologies. I don't know really how it compares to Gorilla Glass 6 even at this point, but the fact that they're working even more so on added scratch resistance, I think that means a lot. And with the iPhone XS, it certainly did get a lot better. I'm excited to see the durability keep growing. And lastly, this report went into detail on the pricing of the iPhone XS and the XR series. So they said that the pricing is 
practically going to stay the same. The 10R2 is going to start at $749. The iPhone 11, the 5.8 inch model, will start at $999. And the iPhone XS Max at $1,099, well, the 11 Max, I'm assuming. So pricing isn't changing. What does this mean? If that's to be true, it means like Apple hasn't learned their lesson or they're still going for that premium luxury brand. I feel like they're leaving so many people behind that in the past were able to upgrade to iPhones, but now getting so expensive. They're, they're definitely differentiating themselves and I'm noticing this a lot into the luxury brand. With the prices they're charging that most can't afford to pay, they are certainly bridging that gap between affordable and high-end luxury. Okay, and this piqued my interest, but don't get too excited. It's just a patent after all. Apple is still working on Touch ID and it just doesn't make sense. With them giving such a firm stance on the benefits of Face ID and how they're moving past Touch ID, why are they still working on it? For what applications are they gonna be using this on? In the latest patent, they have a full screen iPhone now with a Touch ID interface on the entire glass. And Apple's been working on this for the longest time. From time to time, we are seeing these new patents. This is just the latest one to add to the mountain of Touch ID patents they already own. You really can't help but get creative here and dream of an iPhone that Apple can make without a Face ID module on the top. Obviously, there would be no notch. There would be no reason to have one. I feel like they can embed that earpiece in the very top bezel easily and you'll just have this massive display as we showed here. It's, it's a gorgeous look, it matches the iPhone well, and if they can make it work better, be a little bit more secure somehow, then it could definitely replace Face ID. Now this latest patent details an acoustic method for getting the reading of your thumbprint. So this wouldn't be ultrasonic like the Galaxy S10 screen, which is about to be released here. This is an entirely new technology that throws sound waves towards your fingerprint, measures them to an extent from what I understood reading the patent, and then gives that info back to the processor where it can be decoded. Believe it or not, there are a couple of benefits regarding this acoustic fingerprint technology that's better than ultrasonic even. It means you can have a thinner glass panel on the actual iPhone making the, the product thinner or giving you more room, even just a little bit for that extra little bit of battery life. What it's all about nowadays, squeezing out just a little bit more efficiency and that, that will add up I think over time. So that technology could be more accurate as well. I think they go into detail about that. It requires less processing power to do because of this sound transmittance is what they're saying. Very interesting technology all around. So going forward, we'll see if Apple does anything with this, but it's more than likely these patents are for future MacBooks or maybe an iPad MacBook crossover, which Apple did also say they are not working on, do not even think about it. Uh, who knows? Apple will be pulling some fast cards I feel like in the future. Okay, and when I saw this headline, my heart just soared. iPhone SE 2, man, what a dream. That perfect iPhone that everyone just creams about online is making a comeback. Well, at least this website thinks so. What are they, Tech Garage? We haven't heard much from them either, but they're saying based on some concept images, the iPhone SE 2 is happening. It's gonna be sophisticated. The iPhone 10's little brother, glass back for wireless charging. It'll have Face ID technology. It'll cut into the iPhone 11's market share for less. Of course, this is a budget end model. Not a chance, there's no way. My realistic view on the iPhone SE 2 is if it were to ever be released, which I think it could be because Apple this year is releasing all these budget end model refreshes, the iPad mini, the cheaper iPad, the iPod touch seven generation, let that be an example here. The iPhone SE 2 could easily get a refresh. I mean, it'll probably keep the same shape, same display, just get an upgraded camera and processor bump, maybe some speaker changes. But I think fundamentally it'll be the same design here. But hey, one can dream. And I think one of our most gorgeous concepts was the iPhone SE2, there are several variants, one with uh, varying sizes of notches here, the camera cutouts like the Galaxy will do. Apple could do something truly remarkable with this phone, they just choose not to. And I think out of necessity, they might turn to the iPhone SE2 eventually just to, to capture that low end market. But for now, I would treat this article as fluff. Okay, and this is something that I totally do not expect from Apple, and Mark Gurman puts it very well. Apple is asking their employees for high pressure sales tactics, or at some point did, during out of warranty iPhone repairs. This is something you would not expect from a company like Apple. So I'm a little disappointed to see this in the headlines, but apparently Apple is having such a hard time selling and moving product that they're enforcing a little bit more violent, and I'm over exaggerating here, tactics that they usually wouldn't use if the iPhones were selling themselves. So I'm, I'm a firm believer that the product you're selling has to be so good that people are gonna want it and obviously reasonably priced. So Apple is skirting the edge here. We'll see what happens with this. If they fundamentally wanna address this problem, they need to lower the price of the iPhones, period. They just need to decide what they're doing, either high-end luxury markets or everyone, which is what they've always been about. Now, an analyst from Bernstein brings to light a very, very good point here. Why 
why people aren't buying the latest iPhones. And that's because the cycle for people's iPhone refreshes have shifted from three years, which was already thought to be long, to now four years. Of course, this is aided by Apple's support with iOS 12. Older devices like the 5S are still supported. So people just have less incentive to upgrade right now. And with a four year cycle, my personal prediction is that Apple is gonna shift from crazy big refreshes every year to very subtle stuff or a two year refresh on the iPhones, more than likely. That just seems like where they're going. There's, there's not enough innovation happening to where they can keep pushing large updates and that's where they're tripping up here with the iPhone XS. So they need to either cut the refresh rates on these iPhones or make more significant changes, which is very unsustainable. And something I can totally respect about Apple is their drive to create in-house. Now the latest addition to the in-house gang, in-house built on the iPhone is going to be the modem. So Apple is finally putting the pedal to the metal on their modem project. And this is all fueled by the whole Qualcomm war, of course, between Apple and Qualcomm, their sales bans. Now Reuters is reporting that Apple is going full speed on the in-house modem. And I just updated this design to reflect that. It's gonna be replacing Intel's crappy subpar modems, which honestly, on the iPhone XS, I am not impressed with the signal. And, and I see what people are saying about the cellular issues. I tend to have that from time to time where I wouldn't have issues before. So Apple definitely needs to get on this. And they're faced with two big challenges here. So not only are they developing a new technology, a new technology they've never made before, but also they're battling the time with the 5G network. So everyone is working for that. So Apple has two crazy big milestones to, to cross here, a 5G modem and their first in-house modem. That has to be good too. Now Reuters elaborates and says that Apple might go into the process that Huawei and Samsung do is where they, they combine their main processor with the modem. So that's a boost in efficiency. You don't have two chips in place. You just have one now and they're all synchronized working together. That's just the harmony Apple is trying to get to for the inside of the iPhone control every single piece. So you literally control the equation from software to hardware to the way things look. And it's really amazing. I mean, Apple's doing some great things with that. I hope that they get this down in time for 5G networks. And the Reuters article did state the importance of 5G networks right now. They didn't really say Apple is working on them, just insinuating that yes, it is likely the technology that Apple is working towards because everyone is at this point and it'd just be dumb not to. And a couple of scary things happening in the news recently with iPhones. So apparently a lot of applications have been recording your screen swipes and recording this analytical data, sending it back to the developers. Some of these offenders include Hollister Expedia, which I'm embarrassed to say I've used now. Like I don't wanna be associated with these companies anymore after they, they ruin your trust like that. So Expedia is off the list, Air Canada amongst others. Apple's App Store teams right away went and built some pressure up on these companies saying you need to remove this right away. I don't think they removed the apps from the app store, but there have to be updates to remove those tracking features stats. And guys, that's it. So that's a long winded update, but I got mostly everything out that has interested me these last seven days, I'd say in the Apple world. I also wanted to mention a couple projects that I'm working on. So I'm trying to be more creatively. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but I've been trying to put a little bit more zest into things and bear with me. I'm trying to find a new rhythm. So I've just been on this lull in life and it, it shouldn't be like that. Things are exciting and I'm trying to make it so. So I took on a couple projects, one in the garage. I'm, I'm making a techno art, I'm calling it. It's kind of a display of every iPhone ever made. And here I wanna like, I wanna like put up all the iPhones on the wall. So it's a timeline of all the colors, all the iPhones. And I know it's gonna be a lot of money, but I wanna do something that no one else has ever done. So I'll, I'll be sharing that with you as, as I'm working on it. Also for the kitchen, I'm redoing the island light. Just a couple ways for me to express my creativity in unusual ways, I guess. So stay tuned for that. I'll be making a couple more vlogs. You guys have really, really put into scope for me how much you wanna see that. And I'm like, okay, if you wanna see it, I'll share it with you. I just, I don't wanna be extra, I guess. Posting garbage that doesn't matter. I, if I'm posting something, it matters to me, I guess. Um, but all right, guys, thanks for watching. That's the latest updates, latest Apple leaks. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.